Hello and welcome. Today I'll be going over another recent interview with Jeremy Pearson that was also hosted by the people over at the Arena. This interview took place on March 9, 2024, and I was invited to join the discussion. I want to thank Ash, who is one of the server admins for the V Arena Discord, for inviting me on to ask Jeremy some questions. I would also like to thank the rest of the admins for helping to host the interview and the stream during which the interview took place. I would also like to thank Grimix V for joining us and asking some awesome questions as well. Before we get started, I just want to thank you guys for submitting your hypothetical questions for Jeremy in the comments sections of my last few videos. At the time I asked for V back, I didn't know I would actually be asking him questions myself. So in a way, you guys are probably just as surprised as I was. This video is going to have two parts. Part one will be PVE questions, and most of them questions that you guys asked. And part two will be PVP questions. All right, let's get into the interview. I just want to ask if you're all right with us starting with some questions about the most recent dev blog, because we just had a few questions gathered on some of the features you announced. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Okay, cool. So firstly, please tell me more about the spell progression system and specifically how the points are being gathered. Because I think that in the dev blog, you mentioned that the points you gather are spell school specific. Yeah. So you can't actually, so, okay. I'm going to ask you the most obvious question. Is there a balance issue there because the number of bosses isn't equally split by school? And is that intentional? So but what I mean by that, like there are more chaos bosses in one area than like lightning bosses or frost bosses. And I then think, you won't be able I think that's to, yeah. been reworked a bit. Uh, I would have to like go through myself to, to check out the, like the actual balance of it. But I think, uh, like for instance, there is the balance is off in terms of like ultimates. Like, and when you get out of the, when you finish Act 1 and you're, like, moving to Dunley, you'll have access to two ultimates, one yeah. Unholy and one Chaos one, right? So yeah. you won't have access to, like, a Lightning one or a Frost one or any of that. So okay. there is a balance issue in that way, I think, but I, I'm just not sure that it's an issue. Got it. Got it. Okay. And then since you mentioned the Act thing, even though it was, like, insinuated in the dev blog, I just wanted to check... Um, the the point tier you know how you mentioned like the points mm -hmm. have tiers is that by act so act one would be tier point one act two would be tier point two etc as in like um, all the bosses. yeah go ahead not really it's uh i i it's mostly you know front loaded with with the uh tiers uh tier ones in the beginning and the mm -hmm. tier twos more towards the end uh yeah. but with the tier three sort of sprinkled throughout so that you're constantly getting access to like new ultimates and stuff like that so because okay. uh, the ultimates are the tier three points. So uh, you okay. get two tier three points in act one. But I don't think okay. you get any tier two points in act one. Wait, but are tier three points also gated after like specific schools or are they just universal? They're also gated to schools. Okay. Like I mentioned okay. earlier, uh, you get a chaos one and an unholy one in act one. Because, you know, like the at least the way it's set up right now. Yeah, yeah, got it. Of course, I mean, subject to change, etc. But I just want to say, mm -hmm. because it would have been really weird if you, like, kill Quincy and get, like, one point and then kill Beatrice and get two. Because, like, you know, I mean, yeah. with all due respect to Beatrice, but, you know, she has nothing. We do Quincy. respect Beatrice. Uh, <laughs> there's a, the, I think, a, one of the tier three points is, as you might expect from Quincy. So, you know, he gave you the merciless charge before, and now he gives you the chaos tier three. Right. Okay, got it. And then the other thing about the spells and how they're changing, like we're clear, I, obviously we noticed from um, the screenshot from, I think uh, it showed that the things such as the lockers, the storage, all of those like furniture items, et cetera, are still gated around the specific bosses. So if you want to progress on certain things, then you need to go kill a boss. So for example, yeah. Vincent was you still will still need to get the uh yeah you will still need to get those recipes I, I think for the most part from the same bosses okay fine it's just because it's interesting because if you um i mean if you're changing the bosses to make it a non-linear path there mm -hmm. would still be some sort of linear element to some bosses where you need to kill a boss for a certain flooring or kill a boss for certain like you know schematics mm -hmm. not, not exactly the papers but you know what i mean like just uh thing and yeah though that also uh there are definitely some instances of, of you needing to and i think those are certain pivotal boss points that anyway that we sort of do want you to do 
like it is to some extent still like a, a, a guided journey. There is now okay. uh, much more of a sort of story to the game than yep. there was before. Uh, okay. And I think that's partially reflected in the journey. There's also okay. just like a lot of what you might feel is necessary is also like a matter of preference, right? Like some people might not feel any need to get a golem stone if they're in like if they're not like a PvP. Yeah, like yeah, of course. If you're doing that as part of your journey, you're gonna feel super necessary. Oh, of course, of course. But uh, and you know, like since we're still talking about the same screenshot and what's necessary and what's not, so there was a interesting visual on the screenshot that showed smaller circles, and I think since it was the chaos school, the top one showed uh, something like chaos burn as an after mm. effect. Are these different effects that you can apply to the school? Can you tell us a bit more about them, or are they still uh, like a hidden feature? Yeah. Uh, no, they're not hidden. Uh, we actually talked about it in the blog. Those those are the uh, passives. So each school has oh. three passives associated with it, and you can see it oh. on the actual spell screen. Okay, got it, got it. So yeah. they're the same as the Stygian. Uh, Stygian is that? Yeah, the word? Alter yeah. Stygian Awakening. Yeah. Uh, okay. So okay. you are sort of able to. You know, if you're if you're on like the altar of Stygian Awakening, you can like select yeah. the thing to unlock it, right? But in the actual like spell book, that's where you would go if you want to reference it if you're like not standing directly next to that thing. Right, 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 right. Okay. And then since we're talking about the Stygian, and I know like Grim had a bunch of questions about that as well. Uh, but before we go deep into that, you mentioned about the Stygian passives that they're gonna be well, firstly, they're clan wide, right? So you upgrade mm -hmm. them all as a clan and then you get them. But you mentioned that you upgrade them through rare resources or a new resource in the new zone. And yes. just as a question, is that the same as the shard resource or is it completely different or how does it work? Like how rare is it and how likely is it for a clan to complete all of the passives in a short time or a short period? Uh, I think that's something we're going to get into a little bit more in the next dev blog. And that would be when exactly? Just just checking like for the purpose of everyone, like like a week as, two weeks. as soon as I can. I'm gonna hand over to Grim because I know that he had a bunch of questions about the Stygian uh, PvP uh, aspects and the passives. Uh, mm -hmm. I just like I have a bunch of other questions I'll ask later. But like I said, since we have Grim and we have Sholo as well. Uh, we want to go through some of the other structured questions and then obviously mm. towards the end i'll ask the rest and we'll open the questions of the stream and see what people want to know about if, if that's what uh, for you yeah before we move on it's really important to me that i mention uh i did look into the harpy blood essence not dropping and Ooh. it is in fact unintended and it's fixed in 1.0 you can get blood essence from harpies let it never be said that you guys don't make a difference Sure. Could you tell uh, that? Uh, okay, well, falls in two months, you wouldn't have to worry about harpy blood essence anymore. So I'll just tell him that because that's that's where the question came from. V rising is saved, as Squidly has said, because we all know that the harpy not dropping blood essence was the biggest issue. Falls. It was a huge issue. Massive. Yeah, it was a huge issue. Massive. Massive. Game breaking, basically. I'm glad okay. we finally got it fixed. Cool. I'm just gonna check if Grim uh, can hear me and if he's here. Grim. Yes, sir. We're ready yes. to go. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Go right ahead. All right, appreciate that. So yeah, the, the question I had was actually targeted towards the passives. Um, the way I view those as is kind of as like an incentivizer to play solely one spell school. I know that right now a lot of the end game builds kind of mix and match to get advantage of the different passives. In addition to the spell points that you'll need to unlock them, will you also have to have sort of a qualifier to where, say, to unlock the tier three passives, you might have to have three spells of that given school or to for the tier two, two spells and so on. Uh, can you elaborate on that or clarify if that's right? I don't think there's anything like that set up right now uh, that you need to be specialized in that school uh, with a, a certain amount of points to unlock the passives. Uh, I don't think there's any kind of barrier like that. Okay, gotcha. So I assume that with you saying that, that we'll also be able to access all the passives once we clear all the bosses at the end of the game? Um, yes, but uh, it, it's uh, after you do that and then you do the proper work to gather the resources to unlock the things. Uh, I, I don't think it happens completely at the end of the game. I think it's more towards the later end of the game. So it's not like you finish up everything and then you start doing this. It's more like it's introduced a little bit later in. Uh, I, I don't think it's a good idea to say exactly when right now because I think that might change. Gotcha. Okay, cool. And then that kind of leads me to the next question too. I think this is the 
first time we've kind of seen like a clan uh, progress sort of aspect introduced mm-hmm. into the game. With this being introduced, um, you know, you mentioned that progression was going to be a collective thing. It, does that also mean that clans are going to have to solely select? Like, for example, are all clan members going to have to have only the passives they select to progress towards? Or once you have multiple unlocked, could clan member A choose, you know, a frost and a blood while clan member B chooses static and unholy? Uh, How would that work? Um, This is something that's actually sort of already in the game, I think, like the the clan wide progression. Uh, But right now it's in the form of like research tables. You can kind of like get on someone else's research table and sort of get a jump start from someone else your clan because they have the stuff researched on it you can kind of get those recipes and then if you wanted you could go to another research table and add them uh at least i'm pretty sure that's how it works i i feel i'm in that mode where uh that might have been an earlier iteration of the game that i just forgot about uh but i'm pretty sure that's still how it works uh I I think it's pretty much the same thing, right? Like you hop on and uh, if you don't have any of those passives unlocked, uh, or rather the unlocks are given to the clan based on what's on the Stygian altar. And then if you have already unlocked that on your own Stygian altar, you could like go to that and re-unlock it. Uh, I'm, I'm not 100% sure though. I need to check out on that because uh, it could be the case yeah, I actually need to look into that myself, and I'm not sure if that'll change, because it, it totally could be the case that uh, that's just like a thing tied to the actual clan, and if everybody left the clan, you might have to redo that, which would be interesting. Gotcha. Okay, cool. I, I think you might be right about the research, too. I think if you do view someone else's research, it, it, Bench, it does unlock everything for you, so that, yeah. that might be the case. Yeah, yeah I think I, I might like literally test that while we're talking <laughs> to see how it works. <laughs> No, no, you're good, man. That, that's really really the main two questions I had was just targeted towards that and how that would all work. Um, I, I'm actually I curious, uh, just from you guys here, uh, which way would you prefer that it works? Like, would you want it to work so that it, it sort of, like, puts more importance on having, like, a consistent clan uh, that you have to, like, that it's actually tied more to the clan than it is to the people? Or would you rather it be something that you can carry from clan to clan yourself? And if you've ever interacted with it, you just have access to that, like, power. Personally, I I would rather, and sorry for jumping in ahead here, guys, but I would rather it be tied to the player, I think. There are some perhaps exploitive things that could be done with that, with team swapping. Um, But I I think if you've already put in the work to get it, you should be able to keep it. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's my opinion on that. Yeah, I would. I I could definitely see that. I I I would agree with Grim. I was going to say, I think this is something that maybe should be just like, determined based on game settings just because like i don't really see it well i mean i don't really play pvp so at least from what i'm seeing i i don't think that there's necessarily a huge deal when it comes to who has what buffs and where you are and where you got the buffs from um i i would even Mm -hmm. say that having it clan based and then like tied to just the individual player kind of like defeats the purpose of having it clan based almost because you're already i mean it's like what's the point of being in a clan if that you know if you're just gonna get all of these buffs and then leave and then you have the buffs carrying with you like is am i understanding Mm -hmm. that correctly or i mean i don't know i think this is something that should be like determined based on game settings like whoever's setting up the server um yeah i mean personally i just think and probably for people who have like played a lot of wipes, I mean, especially like in Legacy, one of the most common practices was that when you, uh, how can I say this? Like when you're starting a new wipe on whatever server, right, Jeremy? Like if you're, if I'm jumping mm-hmm. on, I don't know, EU 1034 and I'm like joining a friend, the first thing I do is, can I touch your table? Sorry, that's not an inappropriate comment. It's actually like a research table. So that's the first thing I do, right? To get all the research. So I feel mm-hmm. like if you make it so the so you link the stygian altar to the heart right and you make it so all the players can upgrade that stygian altar so if you're out of the clan you don't get the buffs would mm. be my preferred option because i feel otherwise what would happen is i will join grim's clan right grim i'll take mm-hmm. the buffs from you and then i'll bring them back to my clan and i just skip through the entire content of building that stygian altar myself yeah yeah 
Yeah, I, I because that's what happens. Okay. That's what happens on the research table today, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. From PDP perspective, the concern is that like uh, this would be a, a little bit of a countermeasure to like zerging, right? And mm -hmm. a, a sort of make it require a lot more buy-in to be able yeah. to like outfit someone to make them like a viable like rating person. Like it would give you a little bit more advantage if you're established. And make yep. it harder for them to establish themselves and they also wouldn't be able to just like drop the clan to get someone mm -hmm. else in to yep. do something like it, it would make it significantly more annoying for that but uh would that be worth like the inconvenience to other people and i think like yep. uh from like a pve standpoint <laughs> like it would just be frustrating and make no sense so yeah uh, yeah i totally understand the sentiment yeah, of, of, of thinking it, sh it should only work as like a setting option yeah. But if we don't have the option of making it a setting, like if if that requires too much sort of work for us to do and we have to make a decision one or the other, uh, mm -hmm. I was kind of curious as to as to what people yeah. prefer. But but I, I, I will say it's been a, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to like deviate the, the conversation, but it's been an issue that like talking with a PVP hat on, right? It's been an issue with theorizing like player experience in the sense that people can just momentarily join another person's clan and skip through a lot of progression or get a lot of benefits. Like if mm -hmm. you want to move from research tables, the same issue happens with shards, which is obviously being fixed, which is that if I know that Grim has the shard, I can just join his clan for two seconds, take the shard buff and then leave. And I'm still having the shard buff, right? Mm -hmm. Which is like, again, from a PV, uh, like as Trollo said, it, it would depend on settings, but from a PVP standpoint, I would see a lot of like content skipping or kind of abuse done through that. That's that's all I meant. But Grim, I don't yeah. know what you think, but yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I, I do agree. And I definitely see Zolo's points too. I, hearing it put in that way, it kind of gives me a mind of sort of like a guild passive, uh, passive tree to where if you join, you know, you're just for that guild. My only fear is that, and this is speaking from recent experience in the, the past wipe for NA on V, v world, um we ended up having some members that didn't play so in a situation situation like that where a player has been putting in the hours but you know his clan members aren't online maybe they they have irl stuff going on if he's mm -hmm. forced to say leave the clan and join another one you know i feel like he shouldn't be punished for that um, yeah but i can i can definitely see both sides of the fence yeah i feel that and a lot of the uh because we used to have a lot more uh clan based progression sort of stuff like there was a version of v rising that existed uh, before we came up with V-Bloods, uh, where the progression was not V-Blood based. And uh, there were versions of like having V-Bloods available that you could literally just share V-Blood powers to someone else by having them like drink your blood with like the open vein thing. And the idea at the time was that there is a frustration in survival games when you join up with your friends uh, and you have to play catch up for like three days uh and when that's just like a huge annoying barrier of entry if you've started later than your friends or like you couldn't all get started at the same time uh and just being able to sort of instantly catch up to them uh is really nice i i think that might also be part of why uh so much of power is tied to gear level so mm -hmm. that you can just like they join you just give them a set of gear you run around kill a few v-bloods boom they're caught up um so i think the the sh clan sharing power thing uh and, and like being able to get it straight from the altar ties in a lot with that as well. The convenience right. of of like wanting to be able to play with your friends as yeah. easily as possible. No, of course. I, I mean, like I said, there should be there should be there should still be some facilitation in terms of like if I want to join my friends on a server, I don't need to feel like I need to dump twenty hours into the server to be able to catch up with them. I, I, obviously, yeah. it shouldn't be instantaneous, but also it shouldn't be like troublesome. But I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Also, if you just lock it um, to the clan, as in like make it like I don't know, link to a castle heart that you're joined of, then obviously that also allows you to be for it to become easier because you don't have to farm it. You're just in the clan that has it, right? Uh, but it just avoids. Again, like I said, there are benefits from sharing research, etc. But it also creates a whole other range of issues. Uh, yes. You know, so just that. Anyway. Yep. Like most things in game design, there's there's a lot of trade off to yep. be considered. Uh, no, there's course. not a lot of perfect answers. There's just a lot of, you know, it's it's about deciding what you ultimately want, mm -hmm. yeah. and being able to recognize that it's tough. Game design is hard, y'all. Uh, yeah. But we're trying our best. Uh, anyway, sorry, I didn't I didn't want to get us uh, oh, no, too long. Sorry. I just really like getting in the weeds.
Yeah, so I just want I just wanted to ask one thing about the devlog, and then we'll we can switch around to like PvP and PvE questions. But I just want to ask about the um, the new kind of castle relocation feature and how mm -hmm. that would work. Will you be able to shift the entire base? Like, what happens to the extra loot? Does it just end up in boxes everywhere, or like, yeah, how? it's just yeah. it just kind of spawns with the castle heart. Okay, cool. And uh, you move everything over, including your servants and and prisoners and everything. You just sort of okay. like place the things down, and they transfer okay. with them. Yeah. Uh, in fact, they have it set up so you can't actually transfer it until you've placed your servants and prisoners down, because. Uh, oh the risk of sort of accidentally murdering them by leaving them behind was just a little bit too great to okay. let you do that. Nice. Okay. And then when you appear in the second area, like, by the way, Jeremy, we got so many questions about this, I'm just going to bundle them up. Um, mm -hmm. I think people had questions around, do you lose any resources? Will there be a cost for you to, to transfer the castle? No. And more importantly, will there be a time lock? As in, like, for example, you wouldn't be able to, um, you know, swap your castle mid-raid or during raid hours, and it'll only be, like, between the hours of whatever, like, non-raiding hours or something like that. Uh, for the, sorry, for the castle movement, uh, that was actually inaccurate. There is, there is a cost to moving it, but it's, like... Minimal. Very low. <laughs> it's it's a very low cost. Uh, it, it's like right now. This very well may change, but right now it's like a hundred blood essence. Like it's nothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, that could change. They could they could decide that they that, that there's a reason to put a cost on it. Uh, very experimental right now. But right. Um, in terms of those sorts of uh, restrictions, uh, I believe they've discussed it. Uh, I don't know what they are right now, like the full minutia of that. Uh, and I almost guarantee it will change during testing significantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. there's okay. always, like, there's a lot of edge cases we think of in advance. But uh, one hey, thing yeah. I will say about game dev is it really humbles you <laughs> and reminds yeah. you that you cannot predict everything. So uh, yeah. we we are very much on the lookout and ready to solve for the edge cases that are undoubtedly going to pop up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, we all know that's like that's happened before with like other features that you were you know replied to player feedback yeah, on absolutely. and changed accordingly, like you know keying and whatever. But okay. Yeah, I mean, we talked about unstuck last time. Yeah, I mean, we talked about the unstuck, which has a whole wide range of issues, but also you know. Let's not open that Pandora's box because mm -hmm. it is a Pandora's box. Uh, yeah. I have one question about PvP that I don't want uh, <laughs> Grim to ask because I'm very passionate about this one. Uh, chill and Frost build. You know that Frost build was pretty strong in Legacy, right? And then with the addition of uh, Gloomrot spells and Gloomrot mechanics, what ended up happening is that all the other debuffs kind of don't get removed by veils, as in dashes, okay? Mm -hmm. And then if you're playing Frost, then you're kind of screwed over because if you if you chill someone, they can just dash away and cleanse it, but they can also cleanse it in other means. Mm -hmm. Are you? Would you consider actually rebalancing that, so making it so the dash button is a cleanse and not just a chill cleanse, which I think was asked by, like, four people, by the way. Okay. Um, well, uh... I can definitely put that in as uh, feedback. Like I'm opening a doc right now. I'm just gonna write yeah. that down yeah. uh, as something I can mention. Uh... Yeah. And just like to explain that the 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 obviously if Vin is listening to me right now, he'd be like praying for me right now because he's a, a frost lover. But um, basically, because of how it works right now, Jeremy, it, it just means that you can basically run away all the time. Because if you don't have dash, yeah. you have ages. If you don't have ages, you can have blood rage and so and so on and so forth. Yeah. So you can just permanently cleanse. But yeah, anyway, that was the only question I had on that. And then Grim, you can go through the other questions. Yeah. Like I as a, as just a quick comment, uh, I just want to say I really like when uh, you guys bring me problems like this uh, in phrased in this way. This is like the uh, ideal way for me to get feedback because a lot of yeah. the times some people will offer feedback in a way that's like you should change this, and mm -hmm. it's like cool, cool, but why? Uh, and when you bring it to me like this, where you're sort of explaining the problem and and like the the issue with the actual frost in relation to the other thing and why it mm -hmm. feels bad, it yeah. really lets us approach it in a way that's more than just like looking at an issue, looking at a possible solution to the issue and and trying yeah. to decode why uh, this solution actually helps. Instead, just knowing the issue 
uh, helps us a lot in, in coming with multiple ways to approach it that might fit yeah. better than, than you, mean, you might even know because you know there's there's a lot of things going on in the back end that, that you can't possibly know yeah you mean like sending you a random video with an interaction that you have no context of and telling you how is this balance does not help really i've never heard of that yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I will say that if you send me a video uh please okay. please provide specific context and it saves me a lot of time cool nice uh, okay, I'll ask one PvP question from the chat, and then Grim, if you're happy to take over the the rest of the questions, which you should have uh, now. But I just wanted to ask one question in the chat, which was about uh, Wraith Spear. Um, Jeremy, you know how Wraith Spear used to be, which is you could cancel it back in mm. you know eons ago. But the problem right now is because of the balancing of Wraith Spear, if you cancel it, you just lose the cooldown, right? Mm -hmm. But it makes it very, uh, well, very underpowered in PvP in certain situations because you can't bait, you can't fake, you can't do anything. Yeah. Would you consider changing that, not necessarily back to the way it was or how it was proposed initially, you know, in earlier designs? Would you actually consider, for example, having this, uh, just one suggestion, you know, like the spear thrown first and then the, uh, the pushback, like uh, then the jump? So uh, if you played League of Legends, it would be similar to Callista where she throws the spear and then she jumps back, right? Uh, things like that. So then you can still cast, cancel the spell. It would still do decent damage. It's just you wouldn't, you know, get stunned or interrupted. The, and then you lose, lose the cooldown. Would the Sorry, jump yeah. after be this? This is, I, I don't want to get too in the weeds, but uh, and, uh, you know, I'm not the most experienced PvP in the world, so feel free to correct me on this. But would the jump even really be useful at that point? Because uh, it's so choreographed. Uh, and it comes like after the fact, like, it's not like you're going to be using it reactively at that point. Right. Yeah. Well, th to be honest, I, I agree, which is why I said, like, it's one of the suggestions, but it, it wouldn't be as useful as like reaction, like similar to uh, pistol E, but if you ask me, pistol E is overpowered, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, yeah. you know, I mean, iframes are like, powerful. Yeah. Like iframes are just like super powerful, but I was just yeah. saying, um, you know, without going into details of changes and feedback etc i think uh if you looked at mace q for example to give a counterpart mm -hmm. because i think that's the one we discussed back then about being incomparable you cannot cancel a mace q but if you get stunned during a mace q you get the cooldown back but if you get stunned or pushed back during the wraith spear you still lose the cooldown that's yeah. that's a major H issue right because there's a yeah i think that's there. a yeah i think that's a good point it would certainly be um i'm gonna write that one down just to make sure to mention it. Uh, Maybe having something that pierces, like actual like defenses, could be could be cool. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that is like an interesting point because I know I know we have like issues with the double defensive meta the way it is, and having an uh, counter in existence to that I think would make it significantly less oppressive. You know, because having the option to actually do something about it would be nice. Yep. Um, it kind of thematically fits too, right? It's like a wraith spear. It like it's, it a, it's literally a ghost spear. Yeah. Literally. Like, yeah. So if it if it like you know pierces through uh, shields, etc. But yeah. But to 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 add on to that, uh, and sorry, Grim, I'm taking this question from you just because uh, Chapel asked us then it was it was something that we discussed extensively. Uh, oh, you're, you're fine, Jeremy. Back back in the day, which was. Would you consider, you know, with the addition of passives and spell school passives, etc., would you consider incentives and disincentives for certain spell combination? And what I mean by that, like, would you consider a feature where you give certain passives or unlock them if someone only used blood schools or only used frost schools spells? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so initially, yeah. that was sort of the idea of uh, like the original design of the debuffs. That you get from like the spell schools that like you it can be advantageous that uh, using all blood and constantly stacking uh those uh could be significantly more beneficial than mixing and matching but also we don't want to discourage mixing and maxing right mm -hmm. uh, and make it feel like you have to specialize in, in a certain school and because then i think it would very quickly devolve into okay then which sp school is the best school and that's just the only school people use now yeah um so I think that's dangerous territory. Uh, and disincentives? But... Mm -hmm. 
which is the other side of the coin, which is like, you know, uh, for example, if you use two defensives, then the, the cooldown of both is increased by 25%, for example. You know, something Maybe. like that. That, um, I think, and I don't want to speak too much for design here, because this is something, I, this is a question I would very much have to come to them with uh, to get a definitive answer. But my instinct uh, on what they might answer would be that uh, that could be very unintuitive unless there's a very clear way to communicate that in game. Uh, because just having that debuff and it just feeling really bad would, would be probably bad. Uh, and not knowing why something is worse uh, would feel really bad. But it might be something that's possible if it's easy to communicate, I guess, through the UI and sort of like intuitively. I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. Okay, cool. Great. So, uh, Grim, if you're happy to take the rest of the questions on PvP, if uh, that's no issue with you. All right, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so, to start us off, the first question is kind of targeted towards tournaments. I know you're aware of the tournaments V Arena has been hosting with a shoutcast presence like myself and Timbalo. Would you guys consider doing tournaments like this in the future or sort of the esports style events? Um, I... So it's a little tricky because we're not really an esports title. Uh, and I, I don't think we're looking to make this into a competitive game in that way. Um, it's just uh, like we are not really even interested in being a live service game. Uh, but I really like the community, like, uh, what's the word? Like the community like the grassroots sort of like tournaments, I find them really interesting. I love watching them. Like I love attending them uh, from a distance and, and lurking <laughs> <laughs> or it's sitting in streams uh, and talking about them. Uh, Cause I, I actually used to host tournaments myself. It was uh, it, how I got into games, uh, the games industry actually. Um, but uh, in terms of actually supporting them, I think like that would be something that's interesting to do if it's like tied to other stuff. But in terms of like, promoting uh, a tournament structure or like making a league or something uh, that's not really something I think we're looking to do but I, I think we'd love to promote or support if someone else wanted to do it just not like I don't think that's really our place okay so yeah I, I was actually going to touch on that too I know you guys promoted the um, I think it was the PvP crown or the crown tournament for the last Halloween event that was pretty cool to see oh yeah thank you um, okay, uh, that so was, yeah, so that, uh, that also was something that was sort of like a fun thing, uh, to, to just sort of like participate in. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and also like we did the, the sort of much sillier capture the flag thing, uh, that sort of stuff I would love to do more of, uh, and, and keep doing in the future whenever I have time. Awesome. All right, so for the next question, I'm going to kind of paint a picture here, but the question is, are there any changes being considered for wolf and horse jump? And what I mean by this, if you picture you're chasing someone and let's say they're in wolf form, you're really close, they horse jump, or rather they wolf jump, and then they get on their horse and they're able to immediately horse jump after uh, with that iframe. Is there any uh, thoughts around adjusting that at all? Um, yeah, I, I think uh, there could be something done about that. Uh, it, it is on my like list of weird things uh, that I have. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there might be something done about that in 1.0. Okay. Um, in the world of raiding, are you considering changes for servants or the tombs or, or a vermin nest? Like right now, we have pretty much those three options for defense. Are there going to be any additions or changes to that? Uh, castle traps is like a pretty popular... Uh, request and uh, thing discussed. Uh, thinking about how to implement those properly is really difficult. Um, and uh, I, I don't think we found something we're satisfied with in terms of like what we want to add with that. Uh, if we did, I feel like it's something that we want to add bundled with other stuff uh, to sort of uh, if it was based around castle rating. Um, but I think right now we're sort of trying to focus more on open world PvP because um, there are a lot of issues with castle rating uh, that are just uh, sort of inherent. Yeah. Uh, so I I don't think we're looking at castle traps right now, but it's something that I do think is very cool. <laughs> and uh, 
I think I was talking to the creative lead, uh, the creative director about that the other day, actually. And we were just okay. waxing poetic about the things we'd want to see. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I was, I was going to mention this earlier on the topic of gargoyle. Something my friends and I always joke about is whether we can like turn the statues that are on the pillars to have sort of like a gargoyle defense system. That's I, I, that was I made a, I, there, there was sort of a running joke I had for a while where I was suggesting every single day to give gargoyles laser beam eyes. <laughs> that would uh, be awesome. I would, I would personally love it. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> I would love for gargoyles to have laser beam eyes. We can dream, right? We can dream. Um, so the next question is, and I think we probably asked, I think in the last Q and A, if there's going to be any consideration for no wipe servers, but is there any consideration between sort of like a in between server to where you can opt in or out to, uh, of the rating system on a given day? Um, that's tough uh, because I'm I'm not sure how that would work in terms of like our internal systems. I'm not sure right. if there's a way to just like turn off rating on a thing. So to do that, I think would be like a, an investment on our end of like developing that. Um, and it might involve re rewriting some pretty fundamental stuff, uh, which is always spooky, but you know, um, if it's worth it, it's worth it. Um, I probably not, uh, okay. but I could see like, as we've like been observing over time, the, the different ways that people can participate in rating, like we discovered on official servers that uh, daily raid servers compared to weekend raid servers, uh, there is a massive difference in like drop off to to like how people engage with those daily raids. Uh, so spoiler for anyone, uh, they don't survive <laughs> compared to uh, weekend raids, which uh, weekend raids didn't exist before Gloomrot. That was uh, a little experiment that we did and ended up working out. Um, so to make that even more granular um, is like not a bad idea. But uh, how we go about that, I think, depends a lot on like what's feasible. Um, moving on to the next one, how will you address PvP balances with 1.0? Like I know, I know you mentioned that once 1.0 is released, things like hot fixes and stuff like that will be a lot easier to implement. Will you mm -hmm. have a team sort of dedicated towards PvP balanced, or how will you guys kind of approach that? Sorry, can, um, I, can, I, can I just say might be easier to implement? Sorry, right. just clarifying on that. But, but yeah. My, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so because we're not, like I said before, really hasn't to say any to say anything definitively will be unless we've done it. And right. since we haven't done it yet, I'm a little hesitant. But uh, I, I feel like it. We feel like it should be. Um, but yeah, uh, I am not sure if we'll have a team specifically dedicated to balancing PvP. I don't think so. But uh, we will be taking feedback and we will be, you know, implementing it. A lot of the PVP changes that do get made go pretty much straight through, like, the, the game director. So uh, to say that uh, there would be, like, another team on it, I think, is tough to say. Um, because it already kind of goes straight to the top. Um, but, yeah, uh, I will be taking a lot of feedback on it. And uh, it's a matter of um, how quickly we can we can do it. We'll definitely try. And we'll definitely be taking the feedback and, and doing stuff with it. OK, well, awesome. Um, so the next question is, what measures will you take to address things such as ESP or Vampetizer? Were you guys, have you put any thoughts towards sort of like an anti-cheat system or anything like that? Uh, there is currently a solution we could do, um, but there are trade-offs to it that are a little dangerous mm -hmm. uh, in terms of it will sort of hurt the way you communicate with the server and might cause, you know, like MS lag and stuff like that for everyone. Uh, and uh, generally, when I bring that up, uh, people become immediately hesitant, <laughs> like, is the trade-off worth it? Right. Um to that end, uh, still talking about it. Okay. Um, the next question is something I'm very invested in, but uh, in team fights right now, there's kind of a problem to where if you have things like stacking lightning curtains or golem ults, it's kind of hard to tell which team they belong to. So are you guys planning on implementing any visual indicators or sort of like a friendly versus offensive spell system? 
Um, that's actually a pretty good question. Uh, that's something that I th I've brought up internally. I haven't tested to see if there have been a changes to that, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that was something we could we could implement without too much trouble if we haven't already. Yeah, so on that, just like on how other games have done it, Grim, I'm sure you've seen this as well in other games. What they do is they add an additional setting to the visuals uh, settings, like on the in-game menu, uh, Jeremy, and it gives mm -hmm. you an additional color mode, like a help indicator, mm, and it yeah. changes the color of, or gives you like a, like a frame, like a red frame or anything. So if you were to consider it and be rising settings, if you cast an AOE on the ground, you see a red circle, right? Uh, versus a blue circle or like a friendly circle. So what mm -hmm. it does is it applies that kind of visual to all the spells. And if some people like do not like that, then they can disable it. And if other people want to use it for PvP, then they can enable it. I'm just saying, like that's one way that other games have done it without changing the entire color of the spell. Yeah, it is one difficulty in V-Rising, I think, is that our spells are very flashy. Yep. And uh, it can it might be difficult to get an indicator that like properly that you can, that you can actually see uh, in all the chaos. Um, but yeah, uh, I will bring it up and see if there's something we can do. All right, sweet. Uh, next up is actually, uh, I know in Dev Block 24, you introduced the whole artifact weapons and you showcased the really cool Axie effect. Can you tell us whether or not the new weapon ability modifiers for those, if they'll affect the Q abilities as well? Uh, yes, there are, there are Q abilities as well. Um, they... I don't know if it's only the E on all of them. I, I've gone through them before, but I can't remember which ones uh, currently affect what, uh, which size. It could be possible that there's ones on Q and on E, or just on Q or just on E. Uh, I, I think it might be both. Awesome. And actually, this isn't on the list, but I have a kind of a follow-up to that. Um, since I saw the post, I've been kind of wondering if they're going to be unique to the weapon, meaning like you'll have one. So like for the, the axe that we've seen, for example, is that going to be the only modifier for the e or is there maybe another effect for the e that we could possibly roll uh per weapon i think it's one I, it, it is essentially like that is a unique like ancestral weapon that has a specific name like it gotcha. there that thing is always called let's see what's it called right now. i think they changed the names on them actually <laughs> but uh, like for instance this one right now in in an old build is called chaos knight's warblade and just that sword is always called that that is the chaos knight's warblade all right so the next next question we have is actually targeted towards artifacts again uh do artifact weapons have exact infusions and in stacks or will they be random or can we choose i think you might have just touched on that a bit no they're specific yeah all right uh, next up, are the developers playing on servers to see how the experience feels, and do they monitor how their game is presented to the media and adapting the game accordingly? Um, to the second part, yes, I think I. I that's a it's a weird question because it's like, <laughs> are we? Is it asking if we're paying any no. attention to like no, how no. people play our no. game or what is it? What is it saying? No, so I, I, so sorry. I mean, I know I, I wrote the questions from people, but because I discussed them with people, I have a bit more context. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. actually came from the Russian community. And basically, what they were trying to say is um, so this came from a group of people who are tenured uh, Battle Right players, right? Mm -hmm. And then came to V Rising and loved the game. And uh -huh. so what they're saying in a nicer way, I try to phrase it in a nicer way. Like, are you watching the numbers on Steam charts? Are you seeing the media response? Are you seeing the potential that the game has? And are you, because there's a follow-up question where they're yeah, asking, all the time. Like, you know, yeah, of course. I mean, I know it's yes, but I need to ask it, right? Because uh, I need to get yeah, totally. the question. Yeah, but, yeah but, no, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to answer it too. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a big part of my job. And, uh, you know, I am technically a part of the marketing team. And a part of the, the marketing team's job isn't just to like, come yeah. up with funny funny words uh, to, yeah. to say. It's all about um, finding out how our game is perceived and communicating yeah. that inside the studio and making sure everybody knows exactly what people are saying about our game, what they know about our game. Like our designers and our tech people, like everyone, artists, they, uh, to, you know, various extents because, you know, people, you know, only some people so, take their home, their work, their work home with them a little bit more than others. But like, people read what people are saying about our game. They uh, are often bolstered by it. You know, sometimes some things make us sad, but that's okay. Uh, and 
yeah, we're, we're always looking at like how people are playing our game, what they're saying about our game, what they're getting out of our game. And yeah. uh, we put a tremendous amount of effort into um, knowing what people want from us. Yeah. Uh, and oftentimes we'll see things, which is part of why, like, uh, I mentioned that how much I like feedback given to me in that, in that one way about telling me about what the problem is more than what the solution is. Cause we're constantly looking and thinking like that. We're like, what sort of frustrations are people having with our game? Like what problems are they having and how can we solve it? And, and just thinking of different ways that we can do that and, and giving them things that they might not expect. Uh, but find out, but see, and they're like, oh, I love that. Like, I yeah, yeah. noticed we got a lot of people who were like, wow, I never even considered this, like, moving castles idea. But now that I hear it, like, this solves so many problems for me that I was only yeah. vaguely aware that I had. <laughs> Sorry, this is more like a discussion, but like a follow up on this point. Grim, I mean, I'm happy for you to comment on this as well. But I think both you and I had a have a quite a few friends that are currently not playing V Rising, even though that, like, in Legacy, they were basically online 24 seven, right, Grim? Mm -hmm. Like some people yeah. we know that were extremely yeah. active. So I think because this question came from some of those people, not the ones I'm about to name, but like, you know, names you would be familiar with, uh, Jeremy are like Schmack, uh, Vin, Ronan, Imarl, all of these guys, right? Who were I've extensive never heard, people. never heard of them. Well, actually, to be honest, like most of them are douches. I wouldn't be friends with them anyway. Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, one of them is going to DM me right now and insult my entire ancestry. But anyway, um, <laughs> so they basically felt that something in Gloomrot not broke, but changed drastically, and it didn't make their experience enjoyable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, uh, by the way, I'm not speaking on their behalf. I'm just generalizing, like, you know, sure. across. So yeah, yeah. one of the questions that was is like, have you been, which I know is a yes, but have you been considering the feedback? Okay, so what's the plan for what more? Oh, how would you? bring those players back while also attracting new players and keeping them in the game because you know that true playability is a big topic and it's mm -hmm. a big thing so are you considering anything on that and by the way this is not a question in the thing this is more of a you know general kind of a conversation between yeah absolutely uh, so Grim, uh, also pitch in by the way yeah a really Sorry. fun part about going into 1.0 is that we kind of uh compared to gloomrot uh which was fun i loved I'm I'm about to talk, talk marketing, so you guys might get super bored by this. I'm sorry. I actually like it. I'm really interested in it. Uh, but, like, you know, a big part that was fun about Gloomrot was we got to focus on, like, this one sort of area we built and sort of, like, craft our, like, message around that and be like, here's our, like, really cool, definitely not Frankenstein area. That's, like, really, you know, check out all this, like, awesome, like, moody stuff that we can make with it and drawing you in with, like, that, ugh, that, like, feeling. Um, but now that we're going to 1.0, it's, uh, it's about the whole game again, right? Like it's not, this isn't just like a, an update to an area. It's not just about like, welcome to the new zone that we're adding. It's about like, this is the whole game we have made, we have recrafted and, and made it into like a whole complete journey. And the whole journey is, is going to be sick and we get to just hardcore do the, we're spooky vampires thing again, which I love to do because I'm a big nerd. Uh, and I think that's how we're sort of reaching new players. We're going to, we've got the whole sort of game to show them. And I, I think like everybody is aware that there have been crazy massive successes lately by studios like around our size in like across the board, uh, with all these like, you know, really awesome, interesting games, uh, some of which are our neighbors. Um, but. I think it shows that there is a lot of people who have not played V Rising. <laughs> like there are a lot of people who have who don't even know about the game, even though it feels huge to to me, uh, and it's bigger than I ever expected we would get. Uh, it, you you can look out now and see that there are so many people that we haven't reached and that haven't like we haven't grabbed yet. Yeah. So I think there's like a huge potential for the game to get even bigger. And yeah. I'll be super psyched if it does. If we continue to be around the same size we are now with the community we have, I'll be really happy with that as well. Um, but yeah, I think there's huge potential to do that. Yeah. I think the new stuff will be great for bringing people back. Uh, we're going to, you know, the upgrade the engine, the smoother performance, the hopefully yeah. hammering out all that jank that came with Gloomrot that uh, I really wish we could have hammered out better before. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's going to be a lot to come back to. 
Uh, okay. And the the last like little bit of the game, I think, is going to be a lot stickier than the current last little bit of the game is. Um, and also, just in general, it's just going to be a lot more fun. And I think yeah. I, I I'm super happy with our game, and I I can't wait to bring people back yeah. and get new people and get to yeah. re-experience and, everything again. And one of the reasons, by the way, Jeremy, why I keep like referring to Grim, not just because I like the guy, but because you know since he is on the na community slash the na side actually the na side got hit harder than the eu side in terms of number of players i would say yeah. grim right like i would yeah. say you probably had a bigger dip than the eu this is one of the reasons why like eu beats na you know what i mean like it's like come on but uh other than that <laughs> that's a whole different yeah, conversation i'm very <laughs> unfamiliar with yeah I but, mean, in theorizing at least but yeah but uh, no no but i mean like because the numbers dipped a bit harder on the na side as well right yeah so, no, they, they uh, yeah. definitely did and, and to kind of jump in on that before we move on uh, i kind of want to preface this by just saying i think it's easy for players that are passionate to forget everything that gloom rot fixed and addressed compared to pre, pre gloom rot at least you know in, in a pvp sense but i know that's something i've talked about in my friend group and just other players i've i've played on servers like dojo with is the change in pacing was hard for people to adjust to um and i know Juanette's on the call you know we've had conversations where we've talked about kind of the risk v reward right now uh it's kind of things feel spammy sometimes when you get to the higher level of pvp and me personally you know I, i'm biased because i always love spells like corpse explosion or bone explosion that's been my go-to i played it pre gloom rot but the thing that i found hard to adjust to was that now I have left chances to kind of lock someone down and capitalize on the spell. So in a way you feel sort of forced to move on to some of the faster pace spells in order to actually enjoy PVP and be competitive. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I think you guys, and I've, I've always taken the chance to actually give praise because every time we get content update from you guys, it's always a, a sweeping change. It's always really impressive. Um, so I don't want to take anything away from what you've done. I, I'm passionate about the game. I know others are passionate about it and um, just kind of as a unscripted thank you for for what you've done. It's it's uh, this has been my favorite game. I've been obsessed since it came out. So definitely want to just give credit where it's due on that. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, I really appreciate that. And I, I just want to say that uh, I know that when people are sort of engaging with us and and like giving us criticism, that uh, they're doing it because they actually care about the game. Uh, I would be much more concerned for people who don't give me any feedback or don't give me any criticism because it means like they don't care. It's uninteresting. They just move on. But if people are criticizing us, it means that they they want us to hear the criticism. They they yeah. think the game has potential and they want it to be better. Uh, and, and that's always valuable to me. Uh, I, I think it's great. Uh, people, <laughs> uh, I have often gotten criticized for not being a little bit more ban happy in the main Discord server. But I think it's important to hear people who are upset as long as they can be constructive-ish about it. Uh, and, you know, people get mad and that's understandable as long as they, you know, know how to pull it back. I think they're and can have a discussion where we can get something reasonable out of it. Uh, that's super valuable. So, uh, yeah, definitely nobody be afraid to bring us criticism. But also, if you tell me that you like our stuff, uh, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. And it's nice. And do that, too, please. OK, cool. I have no, an we, embarrassing we, we, we. amount of power. So yeah. of my critique comes from a passion. <laughs> <laughs> like we i mean if we didn't love the game we wouldn't be investing this much time in it and we wouldn't be asking all these questions and you know trying to help the community it's trying to help grow the community instead of you know um, leeching from it if that makes sense but I, I was saying like jeremy also it's it's also about like helpful feedback like you said right like constructive mm -hmm. slash helpful feedback like me coming to tell you like oh my god this feels you know stupid or silly or it, it's not satisfying like that doesn't really tell you much versus like that, actually it does, <laughs> does <laughs> I, it? I know it not, it, it sounds kind of kind of silly but like just saying like hey i don't like how this feels mm -hmm. is actually pretty good feedback because that does come from someplace and if we get a lot of people saying like hey i don't even know why i just hate this and it's yeah. like okay well we need to look at that then because like if a bunch of people are having that reaction there's probably a reason and sometimes it's just um a handful of people who just have a very unique dislike of a situation but um you have to just sort of trust us to understand that this is coming from a contextual place and we look at like the broad amount of feedback we get right like i'm not uh there's a lot of concern there's always like a lot of paranoia that's on that if we you know get pvpers in uh to test stuff that 
they uh, are going to have like this chokehold on all the changes that get ha- get to happen because we only listen to PVPers. But we listen to everyone, and sometimes you guys give me suggestions that I'm like, okay, this is cool, but like there is a perspective that you guys don't see that we have to consider as well. Uh, so yeah. we're not going to do everything you want to do, but we are going to hear you and understand from your perspective where you're coming from and try to do changes that let you get what you want and then the other people also get what they want. Uh, uh, yeah, and it's a yeah. balancing act, but it's like it's important to to understand that we 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 understand the stuff contextually. No, 100%. And I and I think like I mean, again, to be to be fair to you guys, um, Grim, you can also like talk, speak to this. But I think that whenever we gave feedback about certain things, uh, it has been mostly addressed. You know what I mean? Like, sorry, within the realm of reason, right? Like, mm. if we tell you like there is this uh, like massive exploit, or if there is this whatever, I mean, without naming them, but like in Legacy, there was like the unstuck exploit, the clipping exploit, like all of these things. You've addressed them, and then also on ballistics, you have. But w- what I found unfair towards you guys, and I'm not defending you just because you're on stream, I, uh, you know, like I've, I've been vocal about this. You have said that like some changes will not happen until 1.0. So it's not like, you know, there would be, it's not like you insinuated like, oh, actually we're going to balance things in like January. And then you didn't do it. You've said that yeah. we recognize these things and it's difficult to change the spell values at the moment, which is why we're going to change them later on. Grim, I, I, that's what, that message was clear to me. I don't know about you, Grim, but it was yeah. clear. Yeah, but also yeah. not to throw myself under the bus here, but uh, there is also like one thing that you learn to really understand with marketing uh, is that uh, getting a message out to people is actually like really difficult. Uh, and like not all people are going to see everything you say. You can only do, at the same time, you have to give yourself some slack and say, like, okay, like, I can only do so much to get everyone to understand my message and what we're saying and where we're coming from. But uh, to that extent, I don't get that frustrated when people feel like they should have gotten something, even though we said we weren't going to do it. Yeah. Uh, Because they just, you know, it's just sort of expected. Uh, And we try to be as communicative as we can. And as upfront and honest as we can, I think that's really important. <laughs> I think that when you lie to people, it will you will always get caught eventually. And it's just not worth the risk. <laughs> so I would rather just tell everybody exactly what we can and can't do. Um and and hope people, you know, respect that. Um and uh yeah, but I understand why people get upset. And I, I try not to blame them for it. Yeah. I think something also a lot of players that are you know, PvP endures forget is the kind of shift or the balance between PvP and PvE. I feel like there's a lot more players that actually enjoy the PvE aspects of the game than there are PvP. And that that might just be because, you know, I'm I'm a part of some of the some of the more niche or I guess hardcore community. Um, but that's been my perspective at least. Yeah, overall there there are more people who kind of just sort of play solo <laughs> or just like they never yeah. log on to an official server. Uh I think uh, this is a statistic from like back in something that actually really surprised me during V Rising's launch, uh, like the EA launch, uh, was that of servers, like online servers, not even talking about like people's like private servers that they, you know, were just running solo, uh, official servers accounted for, I think, like 30% of total servers. Uh, the, so there's like a lot of players who are just sort of like, playing they never interact with the greater community they never like give feedback or say anything or like pop in uh so there's a a lot of like getting info from them about what they like is sort of tough uh but it's something we also have to consider and uh also you have to consider that the most vocal parts of our community aren't necessarily the majority um but that doesn't mean they're not important and uh, they like their voice deserves to be heard and also deserves to have a significant weight, right? Because these are like, these are also the people I think who stick with us the most. And we very yeah. much consider that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know. So in, in the 24th dev blog, you would introduce that shards are going to be kind of necklaces and they're going to be uh, sort of equipment that can be dropped to fight over. Are you mm-hmm. looking at adding any more unique equipment like this into the game? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's just going to be the shards. But uh, in general, we want to make uh, the sort of 
end game area a uh, hotspot uh, to to sort of draw people out into. Uh, yeah. On in, if you're like mainly a PVE sort of player, I think you're still gonna have a lot of fun with it because you're gonna, you know, have something to engage with, uh, something to like do that sort of breaks up the the progression. Uh, it gives you a sort of new way to play that's like unique to to earlier in the game. And uh, I think um, for the PvP, it's going to be really good because it's going to not only focus people on like world PvP, but also encourage the more geared players and the later level players to engage each other and not really be you know ganking in the lower zones or having fights on top of like lower level players. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, in general, I, I think it's a I think it's a good approach. Uh, but as always, you know, player behavior people do what they want to do <laughs> and uh <laughs> sometimes they act in a way that surprises you so uh all we can do is test and hope and uh adjust and try to make it the best we can be um like i said more on that zone is uh coming up i'm very excited to talk more about it yeah i can't wait man for next week it's gonna, gonna be crazy next week okay might be some inside information there okay <laughs> yeah, um keep your field all right sweet so next up uh it's actually targeted towards secret passages i know that one that i've heard from the community is kind of the idea of like a rat tunnel or rat hole you can use to kind of sneak in have you given any thoughts into implementing that or maybe even adding new types of doors like uh adding that to your castle like having like a secret entrance yeah like secret passageways uh yeah people have mentioned that um i I think you mentioned that yeah. Sorry. I, I, yeah, I think, yeah, I think you mentioned that in a previous dev log, just, just, let, just being fair. But yeah, I, yeah, I, think uh, it was I, I love yeah. the idea personally, and it's something that I've brought up many times, is I, I just really want a bookcase that like slides to the side or like spins around or something like Scooby-Doo style. Uh, I think that would be super fun. <laughs> but uh, that you can't knock on, of course. Um, but uh, I guess I would just sort of ask like what the purpose of that would be outside of just like looking cool because for me it's just because i think it will look cool but like having a sort of secret entrance like what would you really do with that yeah i think it's something the rp community would probably enjoy more than uh you know some of the more i guess pvpers or someone in another community but i i personally think it's pretty awesome personally i think um if it didn't have any kind of extra use, uh, it's way easier to implement because it means we don't have to like judge or tiny systems to it. We can just like make a cool thing. That's right. Just fun to use. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I mean, I think it would be awesome. Uh, it's very much, I think it's a very much um, would be like, I don't know if we were to, for instance, like uh, just talking about ideas for how we might approach the updates after after 1.0. If we were to do like themed updates around like say uh like castle building or something, to have that be one of the things that we introduce as part of it would be like cool to me. Well well, since we're on the topic of like cool doors and cool things, etc. Um have you considered adding a mimic chest? Uh I mean oh. the devourer is already a mimic chest, but No, 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 but like an actual mimic chest. <laughs> uh yeah. I think that would be like under the realm of like traps. Like mm. castle traps, uh, and I think it would be hilarious. Okay, fair enough. I have no, I have no, I have no indication as to whether or not we would add something like that. Uh, I think it would okay. be hilarious. That's definitely an okay. interesting concept. That's <laughs> that's kind of cool. Um, for the next question, it's what can you kind of tell us about the new weapons? Can you speak on anything about how many there are? Whether there's ranged ones or not? Are they going to be, uh, you know, mini magic based one? What can you tell us on those? Uh, I can tell you uh, nothing and no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. So we'll have to wait and see for that one. Yeah. Um, I know in Gloomrot we got the introduction of Adam and that introduce a new shard. Is there are there any plans to introduce a new shard with the in-game zone as well? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, and then this is the last question I have, and I'm sure Ash is probably going to field some to the to the twitch community here but for the jewel system um one thing that i actually gleamed was in your latest post 25th blog i saw that um we had kind of like an inventory style in the spell book and so i don't know if this was intentional or not but i also saw that the 
um, Aftershock spell had a jewel slotted despite it not being unlocked yet. Are we going to see any changes to the jewel, jewel system, or can you speak on any of that? Uh, I remember actually watching your video and watching you like uh, going over trying to figure out. Uh, for for one, uh, that UI has actually been updated, uh, but also uh, that's just sort of like a a box that shows what all jewels you have like in your inventory, so you can select okay. them more easily. Uh, so that's that's really all that is. Um, and also you just sort of select the spell. It brings up the the sort of right side menu for the spell and has like the gems on the bottom, so you can just or the jewels in the bottom, so you can just like equip all that uh, a little bit more easily and hopefully intuitively. Uh, some things that we mentioned last time, you know, there was a big talk about the eight slot thing, right? Mm -hmm. And what people want to to uh, to know about is um, how are you how are you managing macroing and other things? So if you have eight slots of weapons. Are those eight slots locked when you're in combat? So if I'm fighting Grim, you know, those are the eight weapons I have. I can't macro anything and swap a weapon. Or can I still change my uh, weapons in and out, as in like swap them onto my hotbar during that? Because that's one of the, you know, big things that would happen if you just had eight slots and people can macro to add other ones. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, I mean, right now there doesn't seem to be any kind of uh, lock on the bar like that. So if people would solve that with macroing, um, I'm not sure if we are like going to move to change that. I'm not sure how they would switch it, swap it with macros. I guess the macro would have to like open their inventory and then click drag it in somehow. And then how would a macro do that? No, so I'm saying the 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 weapon would still be in the um uh how can I explain? Okay. The weapon is in your inventory. It's just not in your hot bar, right? Right. That's yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, so that's what I'm trying to say. If how would you get it from? But like, how mod, would the macro do that? A mod, a macro in any way, like whatever it is. Because, like for example, in the past, what people used to do is there was a macro for you to quickly switch weapon and then apply an ability. So instead of you switching to your, you remember the macros I'm talking about, Grim? Like for example, when you were to switch to slasher and then cast Q versus just mm -hmm. clicking one button and it doing both. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like someone, the general soul if, reaper. Yeah, exactly. So what someone what I'm trying to say is what if someone but, like yeah, sorry, go ahead. When you, but when you did that, it didn't involve any like changing something entirely back onto or off of your bar, right? It, it was uh, just yeah. swapping stuff that's already on your bar. Okay, let me put it this way. I've had I had a thought about things that were not possible to do in the game, and then I met mm -hmm. Willis and Randy, and I changed my mind. So I'm just like gonna ask that question on that on that regard. Like, assume yeah, that it, uh, um, yeah, yeah. I don't like. I'm not convinced that somebody couldn't come up with something to do that. Um, but I I don't know if designing for that in advance is okay. A good use of our time. No, no, it's fine. I just thought that it would work somehow. Like people were asking if it would work somehow, like abilities. So if you're in PvP combat, then you cannot change your abilities, right? Like you cannot yeah. remove them from the slot. So that's. I that's, think that's uh, that's the sort of like on the fly fix that I I think we'd be yeah. able to apply if it became a problem. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. I'll bring it up because I don't know. Maybe if I bring it up to the designers, they'll be like, "Oh, I do see a huge issue with something related to that," and then they'll be like, "We should fix that." Um, yeah. In short, it just means like. You're not allowed to like change your armor during PvP, yeah. Timer, pretty much, which is pretty like standard for other people. Yeah, I think games, it'd be I pretty reasonable. Think. I don't think people would be surprised by it. Yeah. Um, okay. Because uh, right now there is quite a bit of that happening in the sense of like, and I know like some people like it, some people don't like it. Like that. Yeah, like necklaces, yeah. armor. If you if you're running, you know what I mean. Like it used to be like. Um, you know, swapping necklaces mid-fight, etc. So things like that. Some people like it, some people don't. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Okay, cool. And then the other thing is about uh, this is this was more of a a series of questions. So when will the beta be? Are you confident in the new beta? <laughs> Sorry, by the way. Okay, I'm just gonna apologize in advance. Right. When will the beta start? Are you confident in the timeline in order for you to address balance changes and fix PvP this time around? <laughs> And will uh, will there be enough time between beta and release to ensure that the game is polished? Uh, again, I said sorry before I asked these three questions, but yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, <laughs> and again, I did apologize. Uh, so I can't give you the time of the beta right now. Uh, I hope to be able to give a time soon because I, I think uh, we're getting very close to the point where we want to kind of get things going. Um, I... I'm going to say I, I wish we had more time for the beta, but that's sort of an evergreen statement because we always <laughs> want more time for testing. Uh, but uh, I am pretty confident that we are going to do a good job with this. Uh, I, I think we're more flexible than ever. We have a slightly larger team than we had in the last one uh, with uh, extremely competent engineers. Um, I have faith in our people, uh, and I think we're going to do awesome. Uh, as always, though, you know, it, it might not be perfect. Like I said uh, before, I ne until we have physically done it, I'm never going to say it will be done. Uh, but uh, we will do our absolute best. Uh, we really care about the work we do. We are absolutely harder on ourselves than you are, if you can believe it. And uh, yeah, uh, the beta will be as long as we've got. We'll do everything we possibly can. Uh, we will work insanely hard. <laughs> so uh, don't worry about that. Ash, if I could just jump in here, I, hey, I saw no, one no, from I saw one yeah. from Chapel that definitely piqued my interest. Um, yeah. He's another fellow unholy uh, enjoyer. But for the minions and how they're summoned, are there any plans, or or would it be possible to add a sort of key bind or feature to direct them um, in an isolated fight? You know, they're they're great and they feel good, but sometimes in open world when you have mobs or other things they can mm -hmm. be targeted onto, it, it kind of feels kinda bad. Wander off. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um... I don't think we currently have a system for that. I think that would require a little bit of uh, finagling to to make to make work. Um, I'll bring it up. I'd be surprised if it wasn't something that was already considered and probably scrapped for either reasons of uh, you know trade off or or like just like didn't work well mm. with the design because uh, like everything they do, uh, I, this might be hard to believe uh, because it. it it sounds like it's extremely involved, uh, but they really, really test the crap out of like everything they do. You know, they want everything to feel good when they do it, and they're very, very hands-on with their implementation. Uh, everyone, uh, all the designers on the team are capable of implementing their own changes uh, to a certain extent, uh, as long as it's not like super, super, super complicated. And we already have enough stuff in the engine to make it work, uh, mm -hmm. and a big part of the process of designing is implementing their things, trying it out, tweaking it, implementing it, trying it out, tweaking, implementing, checking it out, tweaking. So I'd be surprised if uh, when they were making summons in the first place, they had didn't do something involving that. Uh, but uh, it's worth bringing up. So uh, as always, I'll just say something to someone and they'll be like, that's stupid, Jeremy. And I'll be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's all, honestly like most of the questions that we have. I don't know if you've been checking the stream, but you can see some of the weird rating defense strategies and defense strategies and attack strategies, sorry. Uh, so I hope you're, you've been enjoying that. Uh, yeah, I have been watching that. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. It was people who trapped themselves up in, up in a staircase with no, <laughs> with no way out. Yeah. That was cute. Yeah, that is cute. But, look at like... <laughs> uh, but yeah, hopefully with 1.0, we'll see less of these like random stairs everywhere, but who knows? Yeah, people will figure out like. I would like that to be the case, but uh, yeah. I think we, I think we knew that uh, with stairs being uh, indestructible, that it would create this kind of weirdness. Um, it's um, a little bit of a bummer because I would love for everyone to build super beautiful castles that are rad all the time, and I know a lot of people would also like to do that, uh, but feel obligated to build in this way because they want to defend their castles. Um, this is overall uh, kind of a bummer, but uh, God, it's it's so hard to restrict the way people build in a way that makes sense and isn't immediately going to be subverted by some other equally annoying thing that also looks stupid. So uh, having tried a few different ways and just uh, players finding new ways to make their castles look stupid and also hard to raid, um, it's like a whack-a-mole kind of situation. and. It'd be cool if we solved it, um, but I don't know. Uh, that's it from us, unless you have anything else you wanted to tell us or the stream, or I don't know, make some big, massive reveal. Not expected. Uh, <laughs> uh, <but yeah. laughs> I mean, uh, as always, 
thank you so much for having me and uh, for having all these questions. Like I said, I, I love the fact that people have questions and just don't care, uh, or rather don't not care. Uh, I, I like that people care and want to ask these questions and, and uh, engage even when you're mad. Uh, but for the most part, actually, I'm usually, because I, I, I do come from a PvP background myself of engaging with PvP games, so I'm very used to people being super rude, <laughs> super mad. Uh, and the V Rising community always kind of shocks me with how understanding they are and how friendly they are. And like, even when they are upset, uh, generally are super, super respectful. Um, so uh, I really, really appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, uh, thank you so much for that. Um, this next couple of weeks really uh, from here all the way up to uh release is going to be insane uh so uh keep an eye out uh, watch for us uh, i hope you enjoy all the news as it comes and uh i love you guys yeah of course happy to have you and i wanted to also thank uh grim and Cholo for helping us with the questions and gathering like a whole wide range of questions um excited to see what kind of video you make out of it and future videos as well uh thanks for having me it was awesome let me know what you guys think of all this new information. For those of you who don't know, my name is Shiloh Q. I am a Shiloh Eats Quaintly Reaper and Guide to the Underworld. Um, I stream three times a week, usually on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 5 o'clock p.m. PST. I tend to stream V Rising on Thursdays though, so if you're out looking for that, feel free to tune in and say hello. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Shiloh out.